and welcome back to English with Lucy. I've got a really fun lesson for you today. It is a story time. Now, ages ago, ages ago, I made two story time videos about funny things that happened to me whilst I was teaching. And I always get loads and loads of comments from you saying, please do another story time. And I couldn't really think of anything really funny to tell you until I went out for dinner with a friend and I was telling them about my first job. And I realized that I have a lot of funny stories to tell you. <laughs> so today I'm going to be telling you about my first ever job. <laughs> so today I'm going to be telling you about my first ever job that I started when I was 14, 15 and the four stupid, embarrassing and funny mistakes that I made whilst doing that job. Now the ultimate goal of this lesson is hopefully to make you laugh, but it's also going to be to help you improve your listening and your pronunciation. So I have lovingly written subtitles for you, but I want you to try listening to this once with no subtitles and once again with subtitles because then you can see how much you manage to pick up. Then the second time you watch it, you can look at the words and associate the spelling with my pronunciation. Remember, if you really want to take your listening to the next level, don't forget to sign up for your free trial at audible.com. You can get a free audiobook. Listening is the one thing that you can practice whilst multitasking. So you can listen to an audiobook and practice your listening whilst you're doing something else like driving to work, cooking or whatever you fancy. Right, let's get started with the embarrassing stories. Right. <laughs> Now, I've said it many times before, I come from a tiny, tiny village in the county of Bedfordshire. And there weren't, I mean, my village, it doesn't have a bank or an ATM. It doesn't have a shop. It doesn't have anything apart from a pub and an outdoor swimming pool. And when I was about 14, 15, I was desperate to get a job. I was desperate. I didn't even have anything to spend the money on. I just wanted something to do and I wanted to have some work experience. For me, when I was younger, the idea of having a job and working sounded really cool and grown up. So that's what I wanted to do. And the pub in the village had some new management and I thought the management was really, really nice. So I went over there for a meal with my parents and I just asked, are you looking for any staff? And the manager replied that they were and, and the manager offered me a chance to come in next weekend do a test shift and then potentially work for them. So I did that and I started working for them and I was so happy and I was so eager to please. I wanted to do the job perfectly. However, I have always been a little bit, I think the word, the correct word is ditzy. Ditzy. The definition of ditzy is a bit silly or a bit scatterbrained, doesn't really think things through properly or logically. Um, definitely when I was younger I was very ditzy. I have my moments now but, but I'm a lot better. Um, but obviously this was my first job so I made some mistakes. I actually made four funny mistakes among many other non-funny mistakes. But don't worry, I didn't get fired. This was over a period of four years, of over three years. I worked for them for three years, every Saturday lunchtime. And the first mistake that I made was to do with the soup of the day. So the pub owners were the female manager and the male who was also the manager, but the head chef. And he used to write out the menu board on a big chalkboard and he used to write in scrawling, beautiful, beautiful writing, but very elaborate writing, all of the specials and you'd have to show the guests the special board and read it out to them. Now, the, the soup of the day was a Savoy cabbage soup. A Savoy cabbage soup. However, I read it as a Sandy cabbage soup. <laughs> so I went round telling all of the guests, hello, yes, our soup of the day is a Sandy cabbage soup. And I remember them all saying, Sandy cabbage? How can it be Sandy cabbage? And I was like, look, our chef is very experimental, but I assure you it will be delicious. Well, nobody ordered the Sandy cabbage soup. And at the end of the day, the chef said to me, 
Lucy, no one's ordered the soup. I've got like a whole pan of soup here. What happened? And I was like, well, it was a bit of a strange name. I personally wouldn't order that. He's like, what, Savoy cabbage soup? And I just thought, oh my God. <laughs> And in the end, I did admit to him and say, I'm so sorry, I got it wrong. I thought it was sandy cabbage. I was imagining this soup with like gritty bits of sand in it. I'd, I don't know, but no one ordered it and I was in a little bit of trouble. But luckily they were very nice to me because I was still quite new. So that was the fourth most embarrassing moment. That wasn't too bad. The third most embarrassing moment was the Welsh rarebit. Now, a Welsh rarebit is a quite traditional, it's a traditional dish. It's basically cheese on toast. Welsh rarebit. Now, that day we didn't have the specials board. So the manager said to me, Lucy, today we've got Welsh rarebit. And so <laughs> I thought she was just pronouncing it a little bit posh. So I went and told everyone, yes, today for only 5 95 we have Welsh rabbit <laughs> and so loads of people started ordering rabbit for 5.95 i was like yes it is an amazing deal and they were like yes give me the rabbit yeah we're all having welsh rabbit yeah seven welsh rabbits please so i went back in and i was like guys amazing deal everyone wants the welsh rabbit and they were like what <laughs> i was like yeah everybody wants the welsh rabbit and they said to me lucy it's not rabbit, it's rare bit. <laughs> so I had to go out and tell everyone, guys, I've made a mistake. It's not rabbit, it's actually cheese on toast. <laughs> so that just shows that even native English speakers struggle with British English pronunciation. Rare bit, rabbit. I mean, they're the same almost. Okay, the second most embarrassing moment was, oh God, this was really, really embarrassing. There was a really quite old woman, she must have been 80, with what I guess was her daughter who was about 60, and they were having a lovely quiet meal, and when it got to the end of the meal, the old lady went to the toilet, and so the younger of the two signalled to me and says, obviously saying, can I have the bill? She wanted to pay it quickly whilst the mother was in the toilet, I guess as a surprise, and I said, so I went back, and I brought her a glass of milk. <laughs> yes, this woman had said, can I have the bill? And I had read from her lips, can I have a milk? Can I have a bill? Can I have a milk? It looked the same. So I, I made it really, really special for her. I, in a little tube glass with, filled with milk, I put a straw in. I thought, how lovely. This woman obviously wants to look after her mum's bones, make sure she's got lots of calcium. So I put it on the table, they were both sat there, and I watched them just sit and look at it for, for ages, like, did you order this? <laughs> and in the end, they called me over and said, sorry, um, we ordered the bill, <laughs> and you gave us milk. <laughs> Oh my God, it was so embarrassing. Yes, so in the end, I, I, was, I just couldn't apologize enough. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I read, I, I lip read the, the milk. You know, I, I totally misunderstood. I'm really, really sorry. And I remember them just looking at me like, poor girl, she is so stupid. <laughs> and the final most embarrassing waitressing moment was the time the time that we ran out of ice cream. I remember it was a very stressful day. There were loads of guests. The restaurant was absolutely full. So it was quite high tension. The chef was a little bit stressed. And there was a huge table. There were about seven children there. Seven children, seven adults. There were a lot of people on this one table. And the children all had the children's menu, which came with a free scoop of ice cream at the end. And you could have strawberry, chocolate, or vanilla. And so at the end of their meal, I said, right guys, you get free ice cream. Which flavor would you like? And they were like, oh, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry. So I took their orders. I went to the, to the chef and I said, right, we need two vanillas, three chocolates, and two strawberries. <laughs> and he said, didn't you hear? We don't have any ice cream left. Why did you offer it? And I said, oh my God, what are we going to give them then? 
And he said, he was getting really annoyed with me at this point, he said F all, which means absolutely nothing. I heard waffles. So I said, oh really? Okay then, walked out and told this table of 14 people, I said, right guys, no ice cream, but the chef has just informed me that we have waffles. <laughs> and all the children were like, yeah, waffles, waffles. <laughs> they were so excited and the parents also wanted waffles. So in the end, I went back to the chef. I was like, great, we've saved the day. We want 14 waffles, please. And he just looked at me and was like, waffles? What are you talking about? I said, fuck all. And I was like, and I just thought, oh my God, I have messed it up again, twice, twice, <laughs> how? And in the end, we had to find them yet another dessert option. And, and needless to say, the chef wasn't that happy with me. However, we made up in the end and now my brother works there and I think he does a much better job. So yeah, those were my four most embarrassing moments um, whilst working as a waitress. Um, I would love to know if you have ever had an embarrassing moment at work. Um, the kind of thing that's so awful in the moment, but then afterwards, it's just another anecdote. You can just talk about it. So I would love to hear that. Don't forget to put it in the comments. If you liked this story time and you want to see some more of my story times, I have a story time in Spanish. So if you click up here, you can find out why I was saying perra choriza for two years and what I was trying to say. Um, and also it's a nice opportunity to hear me speaking in another language because all day I go on at you about improving your second language. Why not hear me speak in mine? And then I also have some more in English. I, I tell you about the time that a very lovely student asked me if I wanted penis. So you can click up there as well. And there's also another one about the time that a lovely student made a terrible mistake whilst talking about his mother in a conversation class. So those are the three story times that I have as well. Don't forget to sign up for the free trial at audible.com. The link is in the description box. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I have my Facebook and my Instagram. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah!